Now let me explain the minimum sum in some detail to dispel misconceptions and myths that have surfaced in recent public discussion. First, the minimum sum is cohort specific. Once it is set for a particular cohort, it does not change. For example, someone who turns 55 between July 2014 and June 2015 will need to set aside $155,000 as a minimum, above which he can withdraw. And this is slightly higher than what a person who turned 55 last year needed to set aside, which was $148,000. And that remains unchanged for that person who turned 55 last year. Now, to further illustrate, for someone who turned 55 five years ago, his minimum sum was $117,000. And that has remained unchanged for him. And so on and so forth. Second, the increases to the minimum sum for each successive cohort over the last decade are part of a major planned gradual adjustment starting in 2004 to catch up with what a lower middle income household would need in retirement. This was announced a number of years back. It is part of a plan. How did we arrive at this figure of $155,000 for this year's cohort? That is the amount we assess that you need to get a monthly payout of about $1,200 in 10 years' time when you reach the age of 65, when you begin your drawdown of your CPF savings. We estimate that that is how much a lower middle income household would spend on daily living when they enter retirement 10 years from now. $1,200 per month in 10 years is not, we think, an excessive amount. It is equivalent to only about what $1,000 would be able to fetch today. Some might also argue that both they and their spouses work. So if both are required to set aside a full minimum sum individually, then they will have the combining payout of $2,400, which is more than what they need. Well, the answer is that if they have a property, and many actually do have property, they can pledge that property to set aside only half the full minimum sum in cash. So they each only needs to set aside $77,500 for retirement, which is about half of $155,000. Then the combined payout of their minimum sums will be a total of about $1,200 per month, or just adequate for basic living expenses. And what happens if they don't have a property to pledge? Well, in that scenario, when they don't have a property, they will therefore need to pay for rent. And so a combined payout of about $2,400 may not be so generous after all. Third, if you do not meet your minimum sum at 55, you do not need to top up the shortfall in cash, nor do you need to sell your property to make up the shortfall. Let me repeat this. If you do not meet your minimum sum at 55, you do not need to top up the shortfall in cash, nor do you need to sell your property to make up that shortfall. What it means is that with a smaller amount, your monthly stream out would be correspondingly less. And that is all. Fourth, only half of the minimum sum needs to be set aside in cash. The savings above that amount can be used to finance housing purchases or be withdrawn through a property pledge. This means that a member turning 55 this year, for example, only needs to set aside $77,500 in cash, and the rest can be withdrawn through a property pledge. $77,500 will translate to a CPF life payout of about $600 or so per month in retirement, which is not excessive.